Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to draw a horse muzzle. This full length video in real time is available on my Patreon. If you'd like to check it out, the link is in the description. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be posting videos every week. And so you'll be learning new things every single week. All right, let's get started. All right, so when I start my my drawings I like to have a good base down so I'm what I'm doing here is I'm using a light gray to show the areas of where the light is going to be I do this so that I can make sure that I know where everything else is going to be it's almost like a reference point and so I know that okay this is where the outline of the nostril is this is where the outer shadow is so it keeps everything in check here you can see that I'm using a darker gray What's this going to do is it's going to show me where all my darker areas are. You can see how light I'm pressing. You can still see the texture of the paper through the drawing. And that's because I don't want to build up those layers too fast. Right? This is just about getting those values down, knowing where everything is going and getting the transitions right. So here I'm just darkening that area still. It's actually going to be a lot darker than it is now. All right, so now I'm adding the different colors to the nose. As you can see, this is a very colorful horse, and so it's going to have a lot of colors in it. So in this nose, I'm going to be using, you know, the reddish browns, um, also tans and yellows, and even some oranges in the bottom lip too. Okay, so you can see I'm really going dark in there. Um, most of this portrait is made with the Carbothellos, but I do, I have used some Karen Ash and some Faber Castle just to get those details in as well. So here you can see I'm laying in those uh, creases for the nose and that's just so it can be an extra reference point of where my nostrils are, are things in the proper place, how wide is the nostril going to be. So I've defined that shape and you can see I'm laying in that brown um, in different areas of the nose to just unify it and it's building up those colors gradually, right? Laying light layers down so that I'm not I'm not having just one layer of color. You know, we want to add multiple colors on top of one another so we have more variation. I'm adding in color until the paper is smooth so that we'll be able to lay the details on top. If we don't get rid of the tooth of the paper, what it will mean is that tooth will interfere with our details and we don't want that. So that's why it's multiple light layers to add up. And you'll notice I haven't used any white yet and that's because we want to save the white for in our really punchiest areas. And you can see it's really interesting that reddish brown butting against that that light gray and I carry so you'll see I carry that darker brown up into those into those crease marks so it's just a smoother transition you know and I'm adding details with not only the darker gray but also the lighter colors too and that's because you know the right light reflects off the indentations and the rises and things just as much as the the creases So here you can see I'm using this cream color to add that highlight and um, that was really interesting about this portrait is it wasn't the white highlight there was some white highlight but not too much the highlighting was actually this beautiful cream color and you'll see sometimes I press down on the paper and the reason I do that I don't do that all the time is because that the pastel is laying on the surface of the paper and isn't pushed into the paper and so if I know that there's going to be a lot of layers over the top such as fur details I'll push that pastel in just so that the paper texture doesn't interfere and it means I can get more layers over the top so you can see here I'm doing the nostril as black but I'm leaving an area open that is the area where the light gradually goes into the nostril And you can see I'm using that pink all around so that way that it unifies in with the rest of the piece. And because we're using pastels, we can lay lighter colors over dark. So that so you don't have to be too concerned that your nostril is too dark at this point because we can always add, you know, some of the lighter grays over that black to make it a smoother transition from dark to light, depending on your reference photo. And you can see that the majority of this is Carbothellos, but I'm using the Karen Diage and the Faber Castell just for those details. And the reason for that is I can just, with the Faber Castell, it just gives me a sharper point and a more defined point. The lead is, because the lead is so hard, it's less likely to break. So I'm able to punch in those details exactly how I want them. So the bottom lip of this horse was really interesting. It was this yellow color. 
um, and so that really gave this drawing a lot of uniqueness in terms of color. And you can see that I'm using the reddish browns and the pinks to transition between the yellow and that dark brown color of the muzzle. Right, so here I'm using tan and overlaying it so that we have a smooth transition from that light yellow all the way up to that dark brown so it doesn't look like there's an edge. And you'll notice, so when I'm using this uh, yellow brown, again, doing some details in the lighter gray, lighter yellow area and also doing details in the dark brown area to transition them, have a smoother transition. And I'm also using it in different areas too, right? So you can see that I have the yellows over by the eyes and, you know, above the nose, the nostrils, so that it all ties in together, right? If I just have this random yellow nose, it's going to look very odd. So it's just a case of going in, adding the lighter details. Don't be afraid to add the details in darker colors and the lighter colors, you know, and wherever I see that I need things darker and I just punch them back with the darker color, obviously, and really look at your reference photo for details. You know, horse noses are really fascinating with the amount of details that they have. So here you can see I'm using that white extremely sparingly just in the detail areas and not doing like the entire nostril as white, just in the areas where that white is really focused, you know, where that's the strongest light there is in the nose. So coming in again with that light layer, right, and then building on top of that, taking that grey and moving it in different sections so that it's unified. adding that pink to the different area. You know, this is really interesting. You know, I now noticed I took that pink and moved it into the light, the yellow area and the brown area. So here I'm just, I was darkening the, the nostril so that I was getting rid of all the texture of the paper with that hard pastel. And I'm using this dark pastel, like the dark gray, to add all those little details. So where your whiskers are gonna be, they have like little divots, like tiny little divots. And so that is where the hair is gonna grow from. And so I always like to add those details as well as the whiskers. And you can do them with either the lighter pencil or the darker pencil, depending on your lighting. Right? And don't be afraid to add them to your drawing. If your reference photo doesn't have them, I recommend you add them because it'll add some extra interest. Okay, so I'm pushing those lights and I'm pushing the darks and then I'm transitioning, right? Laying the colors in and you can see like where I'm working on the nose. I'm also bringing that detail into the face so that they it's a smooth transition from the face into the nose. So they look like they belong together and merge together rather than having them two separate sections. Okay, so I'm adding the details in that light cream with the Caran d'Ache. The reason I chose the Caran d'Ache for that is because they have a high pigment. So it's a very light color, but it's very high pigment. And so then that allows it the highlight to be very noticeable compared to that light gray. So here on the bottom lip, because the upper lip is bigger than the bottom lip, there is a overhang. So that produces a very sharp shadow underneath the mouth. And again, I'm taking that yellow and those pinks down so that it is unified. And here you'll see I start doing the shadowy areas first. I tend to like to work dark to light and that is great with pastels because I have that ability to lay lighter colors over dark. And so I find for me personally, when I lay the darker areas in, it just helps me see it a little better, see the form versus working light to dark. Okay, so here I'm laying in this darks with that mid gray right and that's because we can always go lighter and you'll see I'll, I'll lay a light a bright color down and then I will go and put gray over the top and so gray desaturates any color you can use a the complementary color or you can use gray and so what I'm doing is I'm adding that color in that pink and then I'm like oh that's too bright I'm gonna desaturate it with the gray okay and I'm adding in that shadow from where the bit lies which is a very harsh shadow so because the horse because the horse is in a very bright highlight right it's in a lot of light that's why you have all the gray on the face and um, it means your shadows are going to be very strong too so I'm going in quite dark with that Carbothello um, just because of fact I know that there's not going to be any details over the top of that shadow because it is a jet 
black shadow we don't need to worry about leaving you know uh, extra layers and you'll see i'm just adding detail and then smoothing everything out right i don't want everything to, i don't want all my shadows to be incredibly harsh right some of them i want smoother transitions so i'll do them in that dark color and then i'll go in with a gray a lighter gray or a color to smooth them back out again you know here i realized that that bottom lip was in was very orange, much more orange than I than that yellow from the top lip. So I added that in, you know, and you want to use those bright colors rather sparingly, depending on your horse, right? Because then that will add that extra punch value. If you add that vibrant color all over your artwork, it's going to have less impact than using it in very specific areas. Okay, so I'm adding those details, you know, and you'll see that I go bottom lip to top lip, right? And I keep flipping and moving all over the place. Okay, so now that the, the muzzle is finished, I add the whiskers. You notice that I left them to the very end, and that is so that the whiskers don't interfere with anything else, right? Because I want those whiskers to go over the top of all my detail. So here we are, we're all finished our horse muzzle. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that like button, and if you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. If you want to see this video in real time, so the video on Patreon is 40 seven ish minutes long and i talk during the whole process going through every little thing um i talk about my sharpening technique um the different papers that you can use you know so if you really want to learn more about pastels um i suggest you go subscribe to my patreon all right guys so this has been a blast i hope you like this video and i will see you all next week bye